Archer. Oh my! We'll show you things you've never seen with cartoons we all know. It's the Cowboy Bob and Buster Show. Hey, boy, we're glad to see you again here today with us here at the Cowboy Bob and Buster Show. Deputy Franco here with Cowboy Bob and Buster and our friend Jake the Horse. That's right, and uh, we're going to have a wonderful show today. We're going to visit with some heroes. That's right, real, live heroes. Oh, but meanwhile, Cowboy Bum and Buster have to go take the horse and shoe the horse. They're going to put shoes on the horse. I'm not the horse. This is the horse here, Bob. Oh, you're just a jokester. Bob's going to shoe the horse today, okay? We're gonna bring, they're going to bring him to the blacksmith. Meanwhile, we're going to visit with some real, live heroes. That's right, at the firehouse. So, Bob and Buster, you kids have a good day, okay? We'll see you later. It's a famous Deputy Franco Friday. Hey, welcome to the Cowboy Bob and Buster Show, special edition. That's right, today we usually have celebrities. However, today we've got heroes. That's right, actual live heroes. We're at the Winter Garden Fire Department. Deputy Franco here with Fireman Bill Rosenfeld and Fireman Dan Rivenbark. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining hey, us, Deputy. fellas. You know, I, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a fireman. That was the first thing I ever wanted to do in life. What, what did I have to do to become a fireman? Well, the first thing you got to do is get your education. You've got to go to high school and get your education. Yeah? Yes, sir. And then, and then from there, what, what, what takes place after that? You have to go to a, a special school to become a fireman? Yes, sir. Right. You need to go to a, a, a fire uh, academy, minimum standards, and an EMT uh, medical type school. EMT is what? Emergency medical technician. Oh, and that teaches you how, how to uh, do what? All the first aid and all the uh, emergency training you may need to help save a life. Oh, okay, so the firefighting helps you take care of fires, and then the other takes care of the people. Exactly. And uh, uh, this is what you went through there, uh, Bill? Yes, sir, that's what I went through. Now, how did you, how did you get involved in the, uh, did you start out as a kid wanting to be a fireman? No, actually, I started out in the Air Force, and that's the job they gave me when I got into the Air Force. And after I got out of the Air Force, I decided I still wanted to do it. And you like it? Yes, sir. And, and how long have you been, been a fireman? Been a fireman for about six and a half years now. Wow, and you're a young, you're a young fella for, for all that time. When did you start being a fireman? Sorry, when I was 19. Wow, that is young. And, and, and Dan, the same thing with you? Well, actually, my whole family was in the fire service. My uh, grandfather and my dad, my brother and my uncle were all firemen, and I grew up around it and uh, had a really good time as a kid being brought around the fire station, and I, I still enjoy it. And how long have you been a fireman? I've been here almost two years, and I was uh, with another organization for approximately a year and a half before this. Wow, and you started young, too? Yes, sir. Real young? About 23. That's when you were a professional, but before that, you've been, you've been around it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, well, let me ask you this. Now, now how many people are, are here at the, the one, this one fire department? Right now, there's five on today. We have five on every day. So it's kind of like a team, like a basketball team. Similar to a team. Everybody's got their own job. They uh -huh. have to do to bring everything together to make everything work right. Oh, neat. Hey, hey, you, like, you guys like car, car, classic cartoons, don't you? Love oh, classic love cartoons. Oh, this is great. There's going to be classic cartoon. Right to the classic cartoon. We want to join us inside. We're going to see. We're going to have a tour of the firehouse and all the equipment. Come back right after this, okay? Oh, this is neat. Little Bo Peep had lost her sheep while out in the meadow green. They wandered close by some wolves who were sly, and soon by these wolves they were seen. one of their kind to look like little Bo Peep. Out he did go with one thought in mind, to capture the poor little sheep.
You're still with us here. We're at the Winter Garden Fire Department with our friends, all these wonderful heroes, the firemen. And uh, well, you know, Dan, you said we get a, a, a light, a day in the life of the firemen. Yes, sir. Well, uh, what are we going to start first? Right here in front of this nice truck. Can we, can oh, we check out the truck. That seems like a good place to start. Who's going to show us the truck? Engineer Mike Walker. Hello, Mike Walker. Hi. You're, you're the engineer of the truck. Engineer of the truck. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, 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 I've always wondered about the siren. What, what goes on with the siren? Why, when do you turn that on? Uh, usually to move traffic out of the way so we can safely uh, continue down the road without getting into any kind of an accident so we can get there as soon as possible. And is it difficult to drive the truck? It can be through traffic. It what, can what, be. What's the, what's the most important part for you? Uh, pumping the truck. Pumping? It, it, pumping the truck, the uh, water, whenever these firefighters need water to fight fire. Uh, that's one of my primary tasks of the uh, of the truck, is being an engineer, is getting water to them. 
And uh, how much water does it hold? It holds 800 gallons of water, and if we run out of that, then we could always hook into a fire hydrant that you might see on the street side somewhere. Oh, yeah. And, and where does the water come from down there? It comes from way down there. How much water is in there? Uh, well, hopefully quite a bit, because they all come from wells. As much as you need, then. Right. Oh, neat. Gee, Mike, what are all these, uh, all these uh, gadgets here? Well, this is all the uh, part of the equipment for us to enable to uh, fight fire the way we need to. One of the things that naturally we need is a naturally hose to get our lines out to a fire uh -huh. and be able to pump it, just like a garden hose if you were to water your garden. All with right. It. Well, that's basically what we do with these hoses. They're attack lines, and we have 150 feet of each one here, and that that's usually enough to get us out to where we need to get to immediately to start an initial attack on the fire. Naturally, like I said earlier, whenever we have uh, a fire and I'm using all my water out of my tank and I need to hook into a fire hydrant, that's what this is for. I run large diameter hoses from my high fire hydrant into this valve right here. Then I can open this valve up once I have the water from the fire hydrant coming into the truck. Then I have pretty much an endless supply of water out of that hydrant. Oh, that's fire great. That's a, big, that's a big hose there. Yes, sir. It's about a four inch diameter hose that fits to that. And then what's inside all the big stuff, the big area in the back? All these compartments have different types of equipment and tools that we need to do our jobs out in the field whenever we're fighting fire to uh, auto extrications to rescues of any kind, and we carry that equipment on, so, on the truck. Oh, so, so if you need to get into a door, like if, if, if some place is burning down, if a building's burning and you need to get inside, there's something in there that will help you get the door off? And yes, get inside. Sir. yes, sir. We have several tools, including your axes, that we carry it, that will help us get into a, a building if we needed to. Wow, this is great. Thanks for showing us the, the, the You're truck. You're quite welcome. Anytime. Bill, who are you going to introduce me to now? Deputy Franco, I'd like to introduce you to the fourth member of my team, Firefighter Brian Sanders. Brian, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, well, what's, your, what's your task in the, in the team? My task is that I'm a firefighter. I ride on the fire truck. Um, I assist also my other two firefighters that you've already met today. And uh, my main primary job is to actually fight the fire. Okay. You know, I noticed that when, when you guys go out on a, on a, on a fire, or on a call, I guess, there's usually two vehicles, the big truck and there's a little truck. Well, what's the difference between the big truck and the little truck? Well, the big truck, the one that I ride on, is the one that actually fights the fire that has the water and the hoses that actually puts the fire out. Uh -huh. The smaller truck behind us here is the rescue truck, and that's the truck that we take to the uh, wrecks and to the medical calls, but it doesn't have any water or any hoses on her to actually put the fire out. So this has equipment in it that, that what, help uh, save lives? Exactly. Oh, neat. Oh, that's why you go to two different schools, right? You go to a firefighting school, and then what is it, e EM? EMT, which is a medical school. It's an emergency medical technician school. So that teaches you how to save lives, and then the firefighting school teaches you how to save property and, and, and uh, to put out fires, right? Exactly. You need to know both educations. Can you show us a little bit about the, the, what's inside the truck here? Okay, good. Uh, on the back, we can move to the back if you want to and see what's called the jaws of life. A lot of kids know about the jaws of life, which we uh, save lives on auto accidents by cutting the cars open. Oh, sure. Okay. Real easy to get to. When we get to a wreck, we open up the back and slide it out. One of the firefighters is on the rescue truck. We'll actually grab this tool right here, which is the jaws of life, and actually cut the car open before we can get to the people that are trapped inside. That's important. This is really important. This is very important equipment that we have on this truck. This is going to help save lives. Exactly. And how long have you been a, a fireman? For 12 years. Wow. Wow, those are big jaws. Those are bigger than a shark's jaw. Firefighter Dan has what's called the jaws of life. He will take that and put it into a door, open up the door, and we can get to the victim that's inside and get them to the hospital as quickly as possible. And help the person to live. That's right. Wow, this is great. What we have on this side is a pair of cutters, just like a big pair of scissors. If Firefighter Dan or Firefighter Bill can't get to the person and they have to cut a piece of metal, this can actually cut the car open and take the whole top of it. It's a very strong pair of scissors is actually what this is. Wow. Wouldn't want to cut hair with that. And this is a, this is a motor in, be, in the middle that, that powers these? Exactly. You have to have a motor that runs all the fluid that actually runs the mechanics part of it. I figured that out myself. <laughs> and, uh, and, and what's inside the rest of the truck? It's mainly medical equipment, stuff. If, uh, if someone falls off their bicycle and breaks their arm, we can take and we can bandage your arm up and get it stiff until they can get to the hospital and get a cast put on it. Oh. And we have stuff for uh, heart attacks. And uh, occasionally we have to uh, deliver a baby or two. So we have stuff on to deliver babies and get them to the hospital. Wow, you guys know a lot of stuff. Exactly. Wow, hey, can we, 
Can we take a tour through the, uh, can you show us a tour of the, the, the firehouse now? Sure. I think Firefighter Dan's going to take you through a tour through the station, and uh, we can follow him. Oh, great. Come on, let's go. And before we go in, Deputy Franco, I'd like to introduce you to our fifth member of our team. Oh, great. Which is our captain, sort of like our boss in a normal team, is Captain Jim Cooley. Captain Jim, nice to meet you. Same here, Captain. Now, uh, what's your job in all this? Uh, basically, I uh, coordinate the efforts of the uh, firefighting teams. Uh, also, uh, primarily to uh, make sure that uh, all the safety concerns are uh, met and uh, hopefully that uh, no one gets hurt. Well, what goes in, what goes, can we see inside? Sure. Oh, great, because you live in here, don't you? Yes, sir. We live here 24 hours at a time, and then we go home for 48 hours before we come back. Oh, let's go inside, okay? Come on inside. Okay, Bill, we're inside the, the firehouse. What, what part is this? This is called the apparatus bay. Bay. Bay would be another word for garage? That's correct. And uh, so we got, we got the, what is this? This is all the... That's called bunker gear. Bunker gear, that's right. all the heavy stuff to keep you, keep you... Keep us safe in a fire. Safe in a fire. Right. Then down here... Over here we've got, this is called a woods truck. This is the old one I was telling you about earlier. Yeah, it's an old truck. This truck here we take out in the woods when the woods are on fire, uh -huh. like they were last year and what's been going on a little bit oh, this yeah. year. We'll take that out in the woods. It's a four-wheel drive, four by four, so we can go out in the woods and not get stuck and be able to put the fire fires out in the woods. Wow, neat. And then there's another fire this truck. This is another fire truck. It's one of our backup trucks in case the main one that we, saw, that we saw earlier. If it breaks, we can go straight to another fire truck. Okay. And then you got, you got some, you got washers and dryers. You don't do laundry on the side here we too, sure do We sure do. We've got to wash our bunker gear and our uniforms to keep them clean if we're on a car wreck or out in a brush fire. And we get dirty, we got, we're still here, so we have to have clean uniforms to wear for the rest of our shift. Oh, that's right, because you're here for 24 hours right, at a time. Right, right. Oh, this is great. Can we see where you, where you live? Sure, come on in. Okay. Well, Brian, this is where you sleep? This is where we sleep at. This is, each one of us have our own lockers. When we come in, we can open our lockers. We have our stuff where we can take showers. We have our towels. We have our sheets. And pillows. I was gonna say you have, you have you sure have sheets, don't you? And yeah. Pillows? There's so many firemen at one station that we can't all have our own bed like you do at home. So we have to share the bed. So every day when we leave, everybody takes their sheets off the beds and puts them in their locker for the next fireman that comes on duty has to share the same bed. Oh, so you just like just like we have chores. The firemen have chores too. How long do you stay here? 24 hours and then what? We're here for 24 hours. We get here at seven in the morning. We don't leave until seven the next morning. So we we stay here. We work here. And we sleep here, and we also take showers here. And then when you leave at 7 o'clock in the morning, some uh, five more guys come in. Five new firemen come in, and they have to use the same area that we do. So they have to set up their whole bed, do everything, do all the chores just like you did, and then undo it for the next group that comes in. Exactly. And how many different groups are there every week? There's three different groups. There's an A shift, there's a B shift, and there's a C shift. And everybody knows all the same stuff. Everybody has certain chores that they're supposed to do every day. This is great. Well, can you show us the rest of the, the building? Sure, come on. Oh, this is neat. It's like a big living room. You get to have a lot of fun in here, huh? Yeah, this is uh, just like your living room at home. We have our chairs, we have our TV, we watch the news and TV programs. This is also our study area. We come in here with our books and our training videos and uh, train during the day. Wow, you got so you don't sit around and play cards all day? No, we sure don't. And eat donuts. Wow, you got a whole, there's a whole bunch to learn on this. But wait a minute, you said you already went to, you went to training program a long time ago, right? Being a firefighter, your training is never done. You always have to train every day, every week. Every year, new things come out in firefighting that we need to learn about and we need to study about. And as a team, we need to work together and make sure that we're all on the same page and we're doing the same thing when we get to a fire. Wow, this is interesting. It's very, very important, too. Brian, what's this big map for? This map is a, a map of our area and the local areas that we respond to for emergency calls. We need to know the area that we uh, respond to very well. Oh, yeah, that's right, huh? And then over here, you got some here notes on this, like, like a blackboard. Yeah, this is like a blackboard at your, at your school or something like that, that uh, we pass on notes back and forth to let us know when there's a fire hydrant that's not working or if there's a street that's closed. If a fire truck's going somewhere and there's a street closed and we don't know about it, we're going to uh, waste time trying to get to a call if we don't know about it. And then w w when, when there's a call, where it comes into a, a, where does it come into? It comes into a printer, and the uh, bells in the ceiling start ringing and lets us know that we have a call and we have to go somewhere. Oh, can we see that too? Sure. Oh, great. Where's that? Over here? Next room. 
Okay, Brian, this is the printer you're talking about? This is a printer. If there's a call that comes in, emergency call comes in, uh -huh. this printer will put out a page that tells us the type of call we're going to and also where it is. Like right now, here we go. We have a call coming in right now. Let's see right what it now? is. Right now? Okay. Really? We have an auto accident that we need to go to, so we're going to have to leave now. Okay. Well, they got to go. Right now? We got to go. Okay, well, thanks. Thank thanks a bunch for your help. We'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Go save some people. All right, thank you. Wow, this is really happening. Cartoon alert! Cartoon alert! Get ready for this one! Yaha! Inside. But it's dark in there. This is a spooky looking pyramid, buddy boy. Never mind, Chowder Brain. Watch your yow. Zowie! Say, we got to the bottom of that in a hurry. Where are we? Well, let me see. We know we're somewhere inside the Great Pyramid. So we take the square of these two sides and add them to the square of the hypotenuse. Square? Like you, Chowderhead. So we take the square root of 783,596.85. Aha, just as I thought. Yeah? yeah? We're hopelessly lost. Hey, Curly, where are you going? He's following that strange sound. Hello, Mummy. Are you friendly? I guess not. Help! Mo! Larry! Help! Let go, mommy! Huh? Follow you? You're as bad as Mo, so bossy. <laughs> Whoops! Hold on, Curly. Help us on the way. Hey, look! Early hieroglyphics! What a find! And what a headache. Ooh. By using my handy pocket-sized version of the Rosetta Stone, I will translate. Papyrus is white. The Nile is blue. If you don't like the lamb chops, then eat bamboo. Golly, they had commercials too. Don't be ridiculous, lame brain. The early Egyptians didn't have television. What a miserable life. No TV. But this. <gasps> You hear that? I know I heard something, and now I see something. <laughs> Run for your life! We're stuck with some real live ones. We must get these people out of here. Here they come again. Hold it. You can't do that to us. We're friends. Yeah, listen, let's talk yeah, to you. Know. We've talked a whole lot. I'm a very friendly crew. How about you? Oops. 
Are we gonna let those mummies get away with this? Not without a fight. We'll tear them apart. Uh, boo. Did you say boo, Larry? Not me. Me neither. Then the last one to the Nile is a crocodile. Yeah, well, I'll be out of here. All right. Hey, kids, now you can become a Cowboy Bob and Buster official deputy. All you have to do is write to Cowboy Bob, and we'll send you a Cowboy Bob and Buster Fun Club membership. Absolutely free. That's right, it's free, including your very own membership certificate and a surprise. Just write to Cowboy Bob and Buster, P.O. Box 560025, Montverde, Florida, 34756. Hurry and get your Cowboy Bob and Buster Fun Club membership today. That's Cowboy Bob and Buster, P.O. Box 560-025, Montverde, Florida, 34756. Well, they took care of their emergency and they're back now. Boy, that was really exciting. And, and boy, you, you, you did a great job. I want to thank all of you fellas you. for... Uh, uh, for showing us a day in the life here at Winter Garden uh, oh, Fire Department. Thank you. And, and as a fireman, thanks for all your help. And uh, what, do you have a safety tip for us? Uh, yes, don't play with fire. Don't play with fire. There you go. Well, thanks a bunch. Leave me to Franco before you leave. Yeah? Do you want to go for a ride in the fire truck? Oh, that's right. You promised I could? Yeah. Oh, great. This is great. Thanks. Oh yeah, just remember something. No matter where you go, there you are. We'll see you next time on the Cowboy Bob and Buster Show. Bye.